We welcome back Elizabeth Turnick to discuss exciting projects for residents and small businesses in the Chelsea area of Atlantic City to improve the quality of life in those neighborhoods. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose to get lost in the woods to gain experience in forest management. Choose to travel through time to understand the past. Choose to soar to pursue a career in dance. Stockton University offers 50 high-quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, offering primary, specialty, and urgent care, plus surgery and more. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. My guest this evening is Elizabeth Turnick. She is the Senior Project Manager for AC Development Corporation, otherwise known as AC Deco. And she's also the President of Ch Chelsea Economic Development Corp. Elizabeth, welcome to Latino Motion. Thank you, Bert. It's great to be here again. And I see you happen to be in the Chelsea Beach uh, there in Atlanta City. Uh, I happen to be on Chelsea Avenue in Atlanta City, so we have this connection. Plus, I am uh, honored to serve on the uh, Chelsea Economic Development uh, Board as well. Uh, we want to talk about economic development, particularly as it impacts Atlanta City, as it impacts the, uh, the, the neighborhood that uh, the Chelsea Economic Development Corp covers. Tell me the latest. I know you were on the show. We talked about uh, the startup of this, but now it's real. Tell me uh, what the latest developments are for the Chelsea Economic Development Corp. Sure. I think last time that I was here, we were in the planning stages and going through the public process. And I invited your um, audience to participate in that process so that we could really get a sense of what the community wanted um, and needed to increase the quality of life and expand economic opportunity. Uh, for both the residents and the small businesses. Since that time, we completed the plan, we submitted it to the state, it got approved. We selected the projects that we wanted to do in 2021. They got approved. We were able to get funding. And as of about a month ago, we uh, received notice that we're gonna receive $681,000 in funding for our projects um, for 2021 that all relate back to the plan that was uh, formulated by the community as far as what they wanted to see in the neighborhood. All right, Elizabeth, uh, I mentioned that you you wear both hats, both of us, the president of Chelsea Economic Development Corp. We want to talk a little bit about uh, the programs that, that you look to implement, but uh, you also are the senior project manager for AC, DEPCO, and it's thanks to that corporation that all this came to fruition. Thanks to AC, DEPCO, we have you on board serving in this capacity. Tell me a little bit about that organization and then we'll, we'll come back to the, the pro programs. Sure, I'm so proud to work for AC Devco. It's a great organization and they're responsible for the Gateway Project, which was the Stockton University and South Jersey gas development on Albany Avenue in the gateway of Atlantic City. Uh, that's a $225 million development on land that was vacant for decades. Uh, and, and desolate and, 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 and uh, blighted. And now you have um, over 500 students that live on the campus there, um, thousands more students pre-COVID and post-COVID this fall um, coming to classes there along with staff, uh, faculty, South Jersey gas employees, 
uh, two to 300 employees there. And so the whole vibrancy of that area has changed. It's, it's really exciting. And what we're doing with the Chelsea EDC is to try and push that vibrancy and that success into the neighborhoods. Um, and so AC Devco is kind of our parent helped um, provide the seed money for the efforts with Chelsea EDC, along with a grant from the state to create the plan. And uh, now we're on our way. And I've really transi transitioned more to work with the Chelsea neighborhood. Um, although the next phase of Stockton is underway, and that's a $70 million um, residential building, 415 more students will be living um, on the campus. Uh, it, it's expanding along the park. So the location of the former Holiday Motors and Eldridge building um, will be the site of the new uh, residential building for the students. And Stockton's really excited because of course, they weren't sure, you know, of course the, um, the location of Atlantic City is the most desired um, residential living for the students and they have a demand, increased demand that will be met by um, this second building. So it's pretty exciting and that is all underway uh, with the team, the project team that's uh, making that all happen uh, here in Chelsea right now. And that's outstanding news. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of trivia. Uh, the building uh, or the land where the high school sits uh, used to be the old high school. And I was the, the board president at the time that sold the, the, the land um, and uh, made it available for development. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, that has come full circle and now is a productive piece of property. And uh, let's just switch back to the uh, uh, Chelsea Economic Development Corp. Let's talk about that grant. Um, what would the money from the grant be utilized for? So we decided to focus on the, some of the most pressing and foundational issues that we heard from the community. And across the board, residents from all different backgrounds and cultures um, felt as though the neighborhood needed to be beautified. Um, they, a lot of the residents remembered when people took better care of their properties, there were less rent, um, absentee landlords, more homeowners, um, and they want to try and get back to that. So one of the cornerstones of our, um, of our program is a, a, a street captain program that uses residents to help become the eyes and ears to help report code violations, public safety issues, and other things uh, that need to be addressed. And in, in, in um, a reward for that, as, as streets start to beautify themselves with the residents, then we have a system of rewards and we have funding from the grant to do things like um, do landscaping on the street or plant trees or lighting or security cameras. The residents get to choose what it is that they want uh, in a reward to help beautify and make their street more safe. So we're really excited about that project. And we, are, uh, we have a job description out. We're hiring a paid coordinator so we welcome anyone to visit our website, which is chelseaedc.org, to apply for either the paid coordinator position, which is part-time, or to be a volunteer street captain, uh, which is just about five hours a week. Um, but this beautification effort really depends on the residents becoming more engaged and bringing back that pride um, and, and, and working together, instead of one person calling to report something, we have a whole network uh, with staff to help make sure things are followed up on, whether it's a broken street light, traffic light, um, or a pothole, or just someone that's not taking care of their property and needs to be encouraged. So we're, we're really excited about that program. We think that that is going to lead to a lot of great things. And, and obviously taking pride in, in the neighborhood certainly uh, adds to that quality of life. And uh, let's talk about uh, the area, right? You mentioned about the, 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 the street captains, but this is limited to a geographic area within the city. Tell me about that area. Yes, yeah, so 
the grant was only eligible for areas that are uh, low and moderate income. So we followed the census tract lines of census tracts three, four, and five, and that is from Annapolis to Texas um, in the Chelsea neighborhood. So it goes a couple blocks into lower Chelsea, but the majority is in the Chelsea neighborhood. It is a 0.75 square mile. It has wards four, five, and six in it. And it has, uh, again, Chelsea and Lower Chelsea. It borders Ducktown um, right at, at uh, Texas Avenue. So that's oh, the area. Yeah, uh, we want to cover some of the, the additional programs. We're just going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latina Motion. We continue our discussion with Elizabeth Turnick. She is the president of the Chelsea Economic Development Corp, and as well as with AC Delco. And Elizabeth, we were talking about the grant that uh, the Chelsea Economic Development Corp uh, obtained from New Jersey DCA for 861,000. We were talking about some of the programs. We mentioned about the street captains. I want to talk about another aspect of, of the programs that you want to implement, and that's around health and fitness. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Well, one goal was to activate O'Donnell Park. Another one was to um, have classes or some kind of activity, any kind of activity really yeah. happening in the park that brings the different um, parts of our community together. So students with residents, South Jersey gas employees. And so we came up with an idea to hold fitness classes. We have a survey right now on our website where we're asking the residents and the community members to tell us what type of classes they go to and when they would like to see those classes, what day of the week, what time of day. We wanna make it convenient for our residents because these classes will be free. We're um, paying for it with the um, grant funding. Uh, we're also looking for instructors. So if there are any instructors, we're trying to use folks that are um, from the community, in the community, we'll be paying $50 a class. This is through Atlanticare with a partnership. They're gonna help with the grant. Um, so we're looking for instructors um, and they would be paid and the classes are free. Um, and that is planned to take place for four months, June, July, just in September, and uh, we're, we're planning to do them all in O'Donnell Park. It just makes it easy to do it there. There's plenty of parking, and um, we have trees if it gets too hot. So we're really excited about that program and feel that that will help us to understand uh, the community and the health interests and the health needs. So for example, just 75% of the population in our target area have, has health insurance. You know, how can we expand that? Um, are there programs that they're eligible for that they may not be aware of? Do they want cooking, healthy cooking classes or healthy um, shopping tips? So Atlantic Care is, uh, wants to be more in the community, helping the community with their health goals. So we'll, this is kind of a step in that direction. So you need to include some Sumba classes, maybe some Salsa classes as well. Uh, but certainly, you mentioned Atlantic Care, a great partner, as well as South Jersey Gas and Stockton in, in, in this area. Uh, let's talk about home ownership, another important component, another important part of uh, uh, really transforming renters into homeowners that could really uh, help to improve the quality of life in our neighborhoods. Uh, tell me a little bit about that program. Sure. Um, unfortunately, sometimes a side effect of a neighborhood revitalizing is that the people that live here may not, it may not be as easy to afford to live here anymore. And we don't want that to happen. Um, there is such a demand for real estate right now that um, the potential is there. So we want to make sure the residents of the neighborhood that are renters are the ones that are becoming homeowners and buying the properties rather than folks that may be from outside the area and, um, you know, new to the area, we really want to give uh, renters that live in Chelsea the opportunity to buy. And the prices are still reasonable in Chelsea. And also the interest rates are um, still low, still hovering around 3%. 
And on top of that, there are home buying incentives that are available 10% from the county if the household makes under 100,000 and that's through the Atlantic County Improvement Authority. All this information is on our website. And then we're gonna be using some of our grant funds to give an additional $10,000 uh, for, for someone to, who already lives in the neighborhood as a renter to become a homeowner. And we really like to um, you know, get that word out um, to, to residents, to your listeners, uh, to reach out to us through our website and you know, get their name in the queue. We're still setting up the details of the program. Um, and that um, uh, Victor Moreno, who happens to be on the, the secretary for the Hispanic Association, uh, is also uh, looking to uh, form a, a class in Spanish, uh, really a tutorial uh, to help uh, folks uh, uh, reach that goal of home ownership. Yes, yeah, so we did a workshop March 10th. Um, for realtors and uh, the community to get the word out about all the different programs. And um, Victor and I are working together to have that same workshop in Spanish. And that'll be um, in May sometime. And we'll be getting the word out about that as well. And, and I hope that we can rely on you to help us get the word out, Bert. Uh, for sure. Uh, let, let's talk about um, uh, more in terms of the, the home ownership and and revitalization in the neighborhoods. I know that you mentioned beautification of the neighborhoods, a, a key component. How would you accomplish that other than the, the street captains and coming up with specific projects? Are there other projects in terms of uh, improving the quality of life within neighborhoods? Right, so the street captain program is focused on the residential neighborhoods. We also have some initiatives for the commercial districts. So we have a facade program. We're gonna be focused um, on some of the vacant storefronts because of the eyesore nature of those. Uh, we're working with the Atlantic City Arts Foundation to put uh, artwork and photography uh, in the windows of some of these vacant storefronts just to um, make it more vibrant. And the artwork is gonna be themed around the focus areas of our plan. The things that we care about, the community cares about, that were highlighted in the plan is going to be the basis of the artwork. And we're also working with them to do murals on some of the facades of the buildings. And as well as, you know, we've budgeted money for flowers and other improvements to the commercial districts. Uh, because We really have a lot of great businesses here. Uh, and we have a lot of people driving by and through the neighborhood. How do we get them to stop? And we think, if we just made it look, uh, a little more appealing, uh, someone would stop because I know we have, for example, great restaurants. We learned that with the empanada contest and I frequent the restaurants all the time. I live in Chelsea and I can't say enough good things about um, how wonderful they are. So we wanna get more people supporting our businesses. We think beautification would go a long way. Yeah, you mentioned the diversity in terms of the uh, the foods that we have and, and the neighborhoods. I want to get into that in the next segment. But you mentioned the the empanada contest, very successful. Do you plan to do more of those type of events? Yes. Yeah, so we're partnering with the Atlantic City Chamber. Uh, they are the voice of the business community, and they're going to do outreach and business support and promotion of our business districts, um, and also hold signature events that help to promote our businesses. So yeah, we have a lot planned in that regard, but we want to drill down and really understand what the business community wants. So we're planning a focus group of about a, cr a cross section of about 25 businesses in a few weeks to say to those businesses, what is it that will be most helpful to you? Um, is it support with a, um, pursuing grants? Uh, is it, the advertising, you know, do we create Chelsea District? We've already started some of the branding around the Chelsea Business District. So we are just gonna really do more of that and be available for the businesses. They need things like, you know, they're having a hard time getting their permits or approvals through an agency. We can uh, maybe help them with that. And again, we have been helping them apply for some of these grants. EDA just released uh, round four, phase four. Yeah, the, the, all of those are very, very critical and important. Uh, we want to continue the discussion because we have to take a quick break. Uh, we'll, we'll be right back with more Latino Motion.
Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with Elizabeth Turnick. She is the president of the Chelsea Economic Development Corporation, as well as with AC Delco. And Elizabeth, we uh, again talking about the great programs that the Economic Development Corp uh, is uh, taking on in the Chelsea area uh, with the New Jersey DEA grant of 681,000. Uh, we talked about uh, some of the help that you're providing for the businesses. There's also a, a, a grant to help some of those businesses who are renting by that building. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so we're one of our goals is to increase the wealth of both the residents and the business owners. And um, when either a person owns a home or a business owns their business building, they have equity then, and they have the ability to access capital um, and in some cases, they're going to be paying less money than what they would pay if they were renting. Um, so we're planning to help business owners um, go through the process of being ready to buy a building, uh, whether it's um, just cleaning up their books so that they can present it to the bank for the financing, finding them um, capital in non-traditional places, uh, like there's nonprofits and uh, community development financing uh, institutions that lend to small businesses. And really there's been a movement to recognize the importance of small businesses in our economy and trying to shift funds um, to the small businesses and have them have access to capital. But in addition, we are planning to give grants uh, to help that purchase. And once um, business owners own their building, they're more likely to take care of their building, to do, put improvements into their building and to um, um, do to invest in their business in a way that they know they'll be able to get the return. So we're really excited about that project and we're partnering with the Latin American Economic Development Agency um, who will be administering it and helping the businesses through the process to get ready to yeah. buy a building. It, it certainly would be hard uh, for a, uh, someone that's renting a business to do infrastructure improvements to the facility when they're not getting anything back in return per se. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the neighborhood that, that you described there uh, as part of the Gateway Project, that extended neighborhood. Um, it's a very diverse neighborhood and I know you incorporated that diverse culture aspects of that into the pro program. Uh, tell me more about that. Sure. So that's one of the greatest assets that the, that the community um, pointed out was the diversity of the neighborhood. And that was just a common theme among all residents, how they're, um, they wanna celebrate it more. So what we came up with for this year, and this is something that will carry through every year. And by the way, we have the ability to apply for funding up to you know, just under a million dollars every year for 10 years. So if we're successful in implementing, and this is why it's so important that we have community involvement and we have, get these projects implemented uh, quickly and effectively, as we're successful, then we're gonna qualify for more funding and that funding will come into the neighborhood. So again, up to 10 years of applying for these funds. So what we came up for, with for this year, and it's hard to plan events right now because we're not totally out of the woods with COVID. There was some restrictions lifted just the other day uh, to increase the um, gathering. There's expected to be more uh, loosening up of regulations with outdoor events. So we're planning just outdoor events. I mentioned the exercise classes starting in June, which we'll have to be doing social distancing. You don't have to wear a mask, but people will have to be um, separated at least six feet. But for events, uh, what we're planning, and uh, we're really excited to work with the community on this, is the fall farmers market which will have um, fresh produce and food, but it will also highlight a different culture in the neighborhood each week. So we're talking September and October, so about eight different farmers markets, and each week will highlight a different culture in the neighborhood. So we'll have to work on when we make it work for the um, Latin community because of your event. We don't wanna conflict with that, we wanna coordinate with that. Um, and we would invite, um, 
the, the, the cultural organization and, and most cultures have one, have a nonprofit um, that would um, invite um, you know, people to play music or dance and have food of their culture to sell possibly food, I mean, um, clothing or other um, items related to the culture that they can sell there. So um, that's, that's the plan. So now we get to highlight eight different cultures. We know we have, you know, much more dialogue. It's, it's only a terrific plan as we discussed uh, before. Uh, the Latino Festival is taking place in September, September the 25th in Atlanta City, uh, assuming that, uh, you know, it, it gets cleared uh, uh, with the funding, uh, but that seems to be assured. It's going to be an outdoor event, a great opportunity to have that. Um, you mentioned, uh, and, and you continue to mention the uh, fundamental uh, issues that we have to overcome uh, to make our neighborhoods uh, better, to improve the quality of life. And I know that me and you have both uh, worked with the AC Restart uh, Committee under the Lieutenant Governor, uh, trying to focus on some of those basics. Uh, what other things do you think are important for Atlanta City as a whole to focus on? We've all heard it over and over again, but the clean and safe initiatives are really important. Um, people want to be where they feel comfortable. And sometimes safety is not a crime issue. Safety is an uncomfortable feeling when things are not cared for, uh, when people don't take the time to pick up the trash in the street or fix the broken windows. Uh, that makes people feel uncomfortable. Or if the streets are desolate, so one of our major strategies, and, and this came out of one of our focus group that was about public safety and Chief White was involved at the time. And it was, I asked the chief, so is it just a matter of getting more people on the street that are doing good things, that are going to the exercise class, that are visiting the restaurants, that are doing the street captain work? And he said, that's it. Those eyes and ears on the street um, really push out the the, the negative, um, the negative behavior, um, people not taking care of their property, it just adds accountability. So if we can get people coming to the market, to the exercise classes, coming to the businesses, um, that really does a lot. We feel that that's going to make an impact. That's what we're hoping for. But again, I can't stress enough how much we need the community to show up. Uh, tell me again how folks could reach out to you to get involved. Okay, the best and easiest way is to get onto our uh, website, which is chelseaedc.org. And they're on there, they can see the descriptions and directions if they want to apply for the street captain paid coordinator position, or if they want to be a volunteer, they can take the survey for fitness, for the fitness um, programs, uh, or they can just send an email and ask for more information on home. They can find out about home ownership, um, grants on our site. So we're, we're really trying to make sure everything's on there, but if there's something on there that they don't see, they can certainly reach out to me and uh, I get those emails. We'll um, make sure to put that on the screen. Uh, but Elizabeth, thank you so much. Very valuable information. And we're looking forward to continue that, that great work in Atlanta City. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us once again here on Latino Motion. Choose to get your feet wet. To learn more about protecting our environment. Choose to read minds. To understand the human brain. Choose to get your hands dirty. To create a masterpiece. Stockton University offers 50 high quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, offering primary, specialty, and urgent care, plus surgery and more. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. 
and South Jersey Gas.